Okay, well, thanks everybody. Um, what I wanted to talk about here, I, I've been getting a lot of questions here recently. In fact, a ton of questions coming in through YouTube and things like that. How do I take profits? Where do I take profits? And I have to tell you, taking profits for me has always been very easy. Um, when I have a profit in a trade, I'm looking for a reason to be taking those profits off. Um, I, I really don't struggle too much um, with greed on that. When the market is giving me money, I take the profits, okay? But let's talk about that and, and why um, that works so easily for me and maybe not for uh, some other folks. So let's say, you know, you're in a nice, uh, nice positive trade like, like JD. And we've been seeing folks taking profits on that JD trade. This was a trade that we called, okay, um, called this trade. It's doing beautifully here. All right. And should you be taking profits on that position? I know a lot of folks have already taken a really nice profit on that trade. And that is perfectly acceptable. Okay. Bob S. just banked $250 on Home Depot calls. Well done, Bob. So let's talk about how we go about taking profits. Well, first thing you have to do is have a plan. Okay. And this is something that as much as I talk about this, almost to the point I feel like I'm preaching and almost on my knees begging people to have a plan and they just plain ignore it. And I don't understand that. I really don't. But let me take you to through just a very, very simple idea. How many of you would feel pretty good if you could take a $100 profit? $100 profit, feel pretty good. I don't know, for, for me, $100, $100 is $100, right? Here's something people don't think about, though. What if you take a $100 profit every day? Just a $100 profit every day. A $100 profit every day works out to about $24,000 a year. Now, let me ask anyone here, would that be a massive improvement in your trading account? Okay. Matt says no. Matt, maybe you want to share with us what you're trading. Because all you have to do is scale that up. Okay. All you have to do is scale it up to fit your size of account. Now think about that for a second. Now what if you only took $50 in profit a day? What's that going to be? almost $12,000 of improvement for your year. 12,000. Okay, so the question is, how small a profit is too small a profit to take? See, our job as traders is to make money, right? Our job is not to be right. And I think that's what messes up a lot of people. We allow the emotion of the trading to get in the way of common sense. Okay? We want to be right. We want to be able to perfectly nail that entry or that exit up there and make sure that we captured every single penny of the move. But how many times do you think that you're actually going to be able to do that? If we can't predict where the market is going to start moving up, why do we think we can predict where the market's going to stop going up? Or where a trade is going to stop going up? 
He can't. Is it entirely possible that JD opens up tomorrow, clear up here? Yep. The chances are probably low, but it could happen, right? Wouldn't it be about the equal amount of chance the JD opens here tomorrow? Yep. The only thing that makes this maybe a little more likely is because we're currently in a trend. But we know any news event can change a trend in about half a heartbeat. So how do you know when it's time to take a profit for you in a trade? Well, let me give you one rule that I use. You guys know that when I buy a stock, I buy stocks at or near price support. Just like we did here with JD. Buy that stock at or near price support. So where do we sell a stock? Well, the first rule, at or near price resistance. So do you guys see any price resistance in this chart? Could we be right there right now at price resistance? Yeah. What would be wrong with taking this profit right now? Currently, now the way I've traded is a little bit different because I sold a call against it. But currently on the JD trade, we're up almost 39%. I'm up, not we're up. I don't know where you guys are. are. Okay. So, would there be anything wrong with taking profits here? None whatsoever. Okay. Now, here's something that I get this question all the time. Because we're all, in, and I see Greg's is, you know, saying stop loss in here. And, and that stop loss idea is I want even more. I want to maximize this trade. But let's think about that for a second. Even if we set a really tight stop loss right underneath this candle, is there a high probability that that goes down below there tomorrow? And you just gave up this percentage of profit up here? Thank you, Mike. For anyone with a small account, make sure you look that over. This can be done with a small account. Thank you very much for that. So here's what I like to do on a trade. As it approaches resistance, I don't worry about maximizing or trying to squeeze every penny out of that. What do I do? I look to take profits as it's moving up. I don't wait for the pullback. If I have reached a trade goal, if I am happy with that position, I'm going to take profits as it's going up. I'm not going to give any of that pullback back or anything in a pullback up. I'm just going to take the profit. That's right. Sell into strength. So not only am I selling into strength, I'm using a set of simple set of rules. I sell stocks at price resistance, right? I buy stocks at price support. I sell stocks at price resistance. Pretty simple. Now let's define this a little bit more. Okay. What does this mean for you in a trade? If you have a single contract trade on JD, a single contract trade, you're up 100, 
Well, the way I've got it, I'm just dividing out. And remember, I've got a short contract on this, but um, short contracts on this, I should say. Um, you should be up more, almost, well, about over $140. On that trade. Okay, what did I say about a hundred dollars a day? What that would do for you at the end of the year? Well, we've just increased that by 40%. Why wouldn't we want to take those profits on a single contract trade? Let me ask you this question. Is there any place that you can go legally and make nearly a 40% return in just a few days? Why wouldn't you want to take that profit? So what's holding you back from taking the profit? Okay, first off, things that'll hold you back from taking the profit, emotion, greed. You show me $140, I want $240. Okay, right? We all want more. Here's why that messes up so many people, because they don't have a goal. They've never thought about what that $140 combined with a whole bunch more $140 trades would do for them at the end of the year. Let me ask you this question, guys. Is it easier to find a trade that's going to make you $100? Or 10 trades that's going to make you $100 than it is to find one that's going to make you 1000 It's way easier. How many would answer this question in the affirmative? How many times have you entered a trade that you were in right initially and the stock moved up? But you didn't take the profit you ended up with a loss because you were right initially. 57% D-Boy on JD, well done. Yeah, we've all done that, right? The stock's been up, we have a profit, but because we want more, we let greed get into the way and we won't take, we won't take the profit. Okay, we won't exit that trade. Now, why is that? Well, number one reason, you don't have a plan. Number two, you don't know what your goal is. And you've never, ever put down what is a goal. What's a goal? What are you trying to achieve? You see, this is a business, guys. And we have to treat it like a business. Okay, so you need to determine what is a number. What, what are you shooting for? You can certainly exceed that, but what are you shooting for? Okay, let's say you have a $20,000 account. Okay. Now, for some of you, this is just going to seem pretty doggone unreasonable, okay? Because you've never, ever achieved this much before. But let me show you how you can potentially do this. Anybody think you would be really, really happy if, you'd obviously you want more, but wouldn't you be really happy if you made 20%? 
and could do that 20% year over year over year. Okay. So 20%, that would give you bragging rights with your friends, right? Hey, man, I make 20% a year. How the heck do you do that? Well, let me show you. $20,000 account at the end of the year, I need to make $4,000 to make that happen, right? So how am I going to make $4,000? That means I need to make $333 per month to make that happen. There are people in here right now that have had trades well over this profit, never took it, and let it go to a loss because they wanted more money. And you never thought about what that return on that trade would do at the end of the year if you just took the profit. How many trades do you think it would take to make $333 in a month on a trade? Do you guys think you could find one trade a week that gives you a high probability of making at least a hundred bucks? Because at one trade a week at a hundred bucks, you're exceeding this. Okay, so there's also an example in here why this is important, okay? Why this is important, guys, is because, can you see, if you're trying to make a 20% return on a $20,000 account, do we need to take high-risk trades? Heck no. We need to be looking for the best of the best, right? We need to be looking for the cream of the crop. We need to be looking for consistently um, uh, concise price action charts with really good setups. Right? The reason I'm showing you this, you're going to ask, some people are going to ask, so what does this have to do with taking profits? Well, if we divide this by four, it means you, you need to make $83. Actually, I'm just going to round this up to $84. You need to make $84 in a week. How many of you have had profits well above that, refused to take them, didn't take them, I want more money, and you're giving up your opportunity to make your 20% return this year? So not only do you want to have a rule that says we take profits at price resistance, you also want to have an idea what's going to get you to your year end goal. How are you going to get there? How are you going to get there if you don't take profits? And see, yeah, li listen to Mike right there. Mike's broken it down into not only a number, but a percentage. Okay? 12 to 15%. He's getting really antsy about taking a trade. Or t about taking the profit. Because he understands there's no place else that he can go legally click a few buttons and make 10, 12, 15%, 20%. And he takes the profit. He also uses a number. 
Mike will tell you, you get around $100, $150 in profit, he's looking for a reason to take the profit. And you know what, how Mike does that? Mike, Mike's reason for doing that is he sweeps his account, okay? He'll sweep his account every once in a while of his profits and he makes TD Ameritrade send him a check. Call it, he calls it mailbox money. <laughs> he gets paid. He's working to make money. He's not working to be right. He's not working to be a hero. He's not working to be to to make a gazillion dollars on one trade. Uh, Matt uh, oh, on his $2000 account, he uh, I don't know. I doubt that. I know in his real account, he he's almost never even 50% invested. But what he's doing is taking consistent profits. And by the way, guys, I do this the exact same thing. The only difference with me, okay, is that I've scaled it up. My account has grown because I've worked to take those small consistent profits. For years, I've grown my account. Okay, so now, where a lot of folks right now are taking that $140 profit in JD, I've just increased that. I've not done anything different. I'm looking at $1,400 profit. It's the exact same trade. I just scaled it up. It's the same small gains done over and over and over just with a bigger position. You want to get to here, get comfortable taking this profit for a long time. Grow your account. That's what we're here to do. Grow your account. If you guys are running into sound trouble, make sure you click that red um, X up there and just reload it in your browser. It can be it can be hiccups in the internet, some server out there on the internet causing a problem, whatever between you and I. And just just refresh and you'll be good to go. Okay, so is that making sense, guys? If you have a goal, and, and here's the thing, this just fascinates the heck out of me. How are you going to make your goal of 20,000, or I mean of $4,000 on that $20,000 account? How are you ever going to make that goal happen if you don't take profits? See, the way I look at this, every time I take a profit, even if it's not what I was hoping for in the trade, it gets me closer to my goal. And isn't that what we want? Why are we allowing greed to prevent us from making consistent gains in the market? A profit is a profit. Take it. If it's hitting your goals, if it's hitting your um, hitting your rules, like we're hitting resistance here, take it. If it's past your goal, take it.
Okay, now let's let's talk about this because this is the, the thing that hangs up a lot of people. Okay, are you required to take the entire trade off? Do you have to take off the entire trade? No, of course not. If you have a 10 contract position here, or let's just let's just use a two, a two contract position here. What's wrong with taking half of that trade off and, and then setting a tight stop loss on the rest? Locking it in, selling into strength. And for that matter, what's wrong with just closing the trade? Nothing. If you take, if you don't take that profit, if you're going to always agonize over the fact that the stock might move up further and you're going to miss out, you're never going to make it as a full-time trader ever. Because if you're not taking profits consistently, you're not paying your bills. You have to get comfortable with taking those profits. And if the stock goes up from there, big freaking deal. Guess what we do? Guess what I do? I just simply wait for the next entry into the trade. I don't chase it. I don't rush. I don't hurry. I wait for the next entry into the trade, whether it be this trade or any other stock that I find. Go back to what I said at the beginning. Is it easier to find 10 trades that can make you $100 or one that can make you 1000 Keep finding those charts. Here's the other thing that I find really, really fascinating. We will set and watch this winning trade. We will set and watch this thing wiggle around all day long. Who's doing that right now? Can't take your eyes off of that trade because you've got a profit in it and you're just so nervous about this, you can't take your eyes off of it. Now let me ask you, is that a productive activity for you to be doing today? Shouldn't your best job be finding the next trade that'll do that? Finding the next trade pattern? If you're sitting here watching this thing wiggle around all day, you're wasting your time. You're giving away opportunity. Your next winning trade may have happened today and you didn't see it because the only thing you wanted to do was stare at this. Wouldn't it be more productive than staring at this and just take the profit and go find the next trade? Because we've done our job. We made money on that chart. Does that make sense, guys? Hopefully it does, because when you get comfortable with taking trade profits, it doesn't really matter. It doesn't matter if it's a $10 profit. $10 profit's better than a loser. Right? I'll take a $10 profit every time rather than a loser. Okay. So think about that, you guys. 
when when you're struggling with taking those profits, use just a couple, three rules like that. Know your goal. What are you trying to achieve? And know that you will never, ever achieve that unless you get comfortable taking profits. Have the rule, when we move up toward price resistance, better be thinking about taking profits. It's okay, write this down. It's okay to sell into strength, even if the stock goes up beyond, you did your job because you made a profit. Doesn't matter what happens after you exit the exit that trade, it doesn't matter at all. What matters is what you did in the middle there. Did you do the right job? Did you enter that trade and exit that trade for a profit? That's what matters. That's right, Fred, move the account forward. It's the only way you're ever going to make consistent gains in the market is get comfortable in taking those profits. Okay. Now here's another little tip to help you improve your trades and improve your trading. You enter this position. What if price resistance would have been right here in this chart? What if that was price or how you saw that's price resistance. The stock can't go any higher than that. The strong resistance level. Do you take that trade? No. I don't care how beautiful the trade setup is. Let's take a look at Mo. And let's recognize the fact we have a beautiful potential trade setup here. But is that the best trade in the world right now? Not the best trade in the world, right? It could be setting up, it could be a really good trade. But if I rank this against a, a, other potential setups, Mo's gonna fall pretty low on the list because it has to deal with this major resistance in the chart. Look how far back this goes. So I might choose another trade over Mo, no matter how beautiful this chart pattern is, until Mo does this. And I will let this happen a lot. You guys see me do this. If I don't like that entry, I wait for it to prove that it can break out and hold, hold on to that trend up here, and then I look for my entry into that trade. Don't take a trade that doesn't have very much potential in it. If you see a lot of potential resistance up there, don't take the trade. Wait for the next entry. Take a look at Home Depot. Rick talked about Home Depot this morning and he was talking about this price resistance, people not taking trades because of that price resistance. Now, here's the thing that he, he didn't say. He was already in this trade. He'd entered it down here. Okay, so he was already in a profit position. But if you believe this trade is a good trade setup, what's wrong with that trade right there? Could you have taken that trade? Yeah, because let's talk about this for a second. Where's your stop loss? Stop loss is right underneath here. Do we have a low risk entry into the trade on that candle? Yes. If it does pop through, where's your next resistance high? Well, you can see I've got this stretched out here for, for a trade, okay? But I still think that there is a resistance high right in here. It's not terrible, but there's a resistance high right there. So now you do your evaluation. Should I take that trade? Is there enough money to make that trade worthwhile? 
And here's the cool thing about this. You don't have to agonize over it. Because if you miss the trade or you're not in the trade, what do we do? Just wait for the next entry into the trade. That's all you got to do, guys. Wait for the next entry into the trade. And then look at that trade, evaluate that trade. Where's that next resistance level? Is there enough pot profit in there to make sense to take before you put the trade on? Plan where you're going to be watching for those ex exits. I'll give you another thing that I do and you guys see me do quite often. If I enter a trade, let's say for example, had I entered this trade on Friday and I got the gap up in Home Depot today, you guys know what my first response probably would be? First thing, if a stock gaps in my direction, yeah, if a stock gaps in, the, in my direction directly after I buy it, I take the profit. I just walk away. I'm gone. I'll wait for the next entry into the trade. I just say thank you very much, Mr. Market, for giving me that nice little gift, and I walk away. I wait for the next trade. Okay. Now, what about longer term trades? Can you do the same thing with longer term trades? Let's take a look at um, AMD. You guys know I'm in a long term trade on AMD. My entry in AMD was down here. Okay. Actually, it was over in here someplace. It's, it went down initially. Okay. So I'm in this position right here on AMD. On this long-term trade, do you, does this look like this trade is working out just like I'd want it to? Moved up. Now it's moving over toward its trend, just like it did here. Move up, move over toward the trend. I'm waiting for that next potential opportunity to move up and attack these highs. It's the same trade. It's the same pattern. Why would this pattern right here be that much different than this pattern right here? Move up, move sideways. And then it moved on up. Okay, so if you're holding a trade for a longer term, have a plan on that as well. What's the plan? I plan to hold this for as long as I can this year. I want to have that nice buffer trade in my account. Actually, I've got several of those, but you know my you know what I'm talking about. I'm looking for that longer term position. Okay. Does this prevent me from taking some profits in this trade? No. I can take profits on that trade wait for this next entry to pop and buy back. I may not close the entire trade, but I took some profits out or take some profits out. Hey, well done, Terry. Yes, and I'm managing this by the weekly. If I have a long-term trade, I manage by the weekly. And as a matter of fact, I'll tell you, it, no matter what time frame I find, if I find a trade on a four-hour chart, I manage by the four-hour chart. I don't change time frames. If I find a trade on a 15-minute chart, I manage it by a 15-minute chart. I don't change time frames. Okay. So taking profits is all about that plan, that goal, those things that you're doing consistently in your trading, okay? And you have to do it on all trades, not just some of the time, every time. You have to have a plan 
how you're going to manage that position. Now, as an option trader, you have the opportunity to manage things a little bit differently. So for example, here in NVIDIA, I've got short trades on this position. I'm bringing in additional money, lowering the risk of my trade, giving me the opportunity to hold it longer. Now you certainly don't have to do that. From the entry of our trade here in NVIDIA, you're up huge. If you just had a simple trade and don't wanna do any short trades against it, take the profit. Wait for the next entry into the trade. Okay, so taking profits is just one of those critical points. If you want to be successful in trading, you have to get comfortable with taking those profits. Utilize those, utilize those rules. Have a goal. Have a rule. I sell stocks at or near price resistance. Get comfortable with the idea. And, and again, write this down. There's nothing wrong with selling a stock into strength if you've made money. Okay? It doesn't matter what the stock does after that because you did your job and you made money. Okay? Don't beat yourself up. I, I find it fascinating. So many traders will beat themselves up. First off, they, they don't have a really good win-loss ratio anyway. When they finally have a winning trade and they take a profit, they beat themselves up because, doggone, I took a profit. Look at what happened. If I would have only held it. Just wait for the next entry. You did your job, you made money. How can we be the kind of traders that beat ourselves up when we lose on trades and beat ourselves up when we make money on trades? How are you ever gonna win at that game? Yeah, you can play the what if game forever. No, I, I know, Bob. I'm, I'm using that as a point. You can, you can play that what-if game forever, but the only what-if game that you should do, if you have that 20000 and you're trying to make 20% this year, you need to go, what if that $100 loss goes into a loss? What is that going to do for my $4,000 a year goal this year? Should I take the profit? So I'm, <laughs> I, I know this is very repetitive, but I'm going to repeat it again. Taking a profit should be easy. It should be something you look forward to. And it doesn't matter if it's a small profit. It's a profit. You did your job. You bought something low, you sold it high, and you put money in your account. Or you sold something high and you bought it back low and you put money in your account. You don't have to have a giant win. In fact, those just hanging out for a giant win are normally losing traders. You don't need a giant win. You need to take profits consistently. Now, I'm going to tell you this, and you guys are, some of you are going to, I know I'm going to get a few angry emails on this. Swing trading isn't the easiest way to make money in the market. Position trading is one of the easiest ways to make money in the market. Take that longer term chart and just buy the trend. If you're brand new to trading, if you have a small account, grow your account with some position trades. 
the biggest winning trades I've ever had, ever, are trades that I held for a longer period of time in a big bullish trend. I'm talking about life-changing trades. Account-changing trades. That's the trade that where you normally take $100 in profits. That trade has produced over $1,000 in profit, 10 times. Because you are just willing to take that longer term look at the market and trade that trend. Same setup, same everything. It requires less attention to detail. And all you have to do is work with the trend. Okay. Well, I'm in one right now, AMD. I'm in Walmart. Walmart I've been in for a long time. I told everyone about it. You guys know where I got into Walmart. I'm in it right here. That bullish candle right there. That's where I entered Walmart. Told everybody about it. And I get all kinds of grief from people. Yeah, but look at it. Why did you hold that? Look at all this pullback. Why did you do that? Well, let me see. I'm in in the about 72 and it's at 97. You know what I want to say when people give me crap like that? I want to say, bite me. Who doesn't want to have a trade that starts at 72 and is it now nearly at 100? Anybody? Now you could have chosen, hey, this move up here, close the trade, no problem. As a matter of fact, what I'm looking at doing, I, I, I actually closed some of the trade. I closed some of it here and then I bought back in here. And I've sold calls against this the entire time. I'm watching this trade for the opportunity to buy more, to tell you the truth. What's so hard about following a bigger trend? You want a life-changing trade? How many in here have ever taken a $10,000 profit on a trade? Or more? Remember how cool that felt? How great that feels to take a profit like that. Yeah, not today. <laughs> Bob C does it so commonly, just it happens all the time. <laughs> you guys know that you can do that with relative consistency if you're willing to stay with the trade. And you don't have to be all that kind of, you don't have to be a great trader. Everyone in here saw me last year take a $10,000 profit on Home Depot. Was that any kind of a genius trade? Nope. Not at all. No genius whatsoever. Nice, Flash. Flash trade's pretty big. He He's... He's no piker. He's he's trading. He swings a pretty big hammer. But you guys can see that the price patterns are the same. If you want some really big trades, 
You don't don't waste your time trying to buy up um, a whole bunch of position trades all at once. Just look for one or two or three at a, you know to hold at a time. You don't have to have a whole bunch of your account tied up. Almost all of us in here are underinvested, right? In our accounts. We have a lot of standing cash because it's too risky to trade everything in swing trades. So we reserve a big portion of our account. Why not have a few of these that are easy to set up? Okay. So you can trade these trades. And by the way, uh, Ken's asking a question uh, about posting. I share every trade I make. Every trade I make. Except for like really quick, a really quick intraday day trade that I may take from time to time. And I don't have time to get that information out. But every other trade I share. I post it here in the room. I, I post it in the announcements tab and I post it to our app. There's never a surprise. Okay. So when it comes to trading, guys, look for those good price patterns, enter that trade, set some goal, goals and some targets. What do you want to achieve? and work to take those profits, okay? There's no profit too small. Every profit gains in our account. That's what we're here to do. We're here to make money. Okay, we're here to make money. We're here to move our account forward. And the only way that's ever going to happen is if you take profits out of that trade. It should be one of the easiest things you ever do. Take a profit, grow your account, do your job. That's what we're here for. That's what you're here to do. Don't let greed prevent you from doing that there is no profit too small all right thanks guys